hope I never have to see this room again. Welcome back to Final Fantasy III Pixel Remaster. Last episode, I got my ass in. Uh, fought Garuda. Took three tries to take that guy down. Which means I had to sit through the unskippable quote-unquote cutscene uh, three times, so that was tedious. But anyway, yeah. Realistically, I'm probably a little too uh, low level. I should probably get myself a few more levels. And hey, a lot of chests here. How many chests in this castle? 20 chests in this castle. Rusty Mail, Scholar Hat, High Potion, Golem Staff, High Potion, Rusty Mail, Rusty Mail, Room Bow, nice, and Gosh, Rusty Mail, Thorian Hammer, Ice Staff. Old armor that's falling apart. Defense plus one. Uh, staff and use the power of Earth. Cast Break when used in battle. I have never found spells like Break to be particularly useful. It's rare for any strong enemy to be affected by it. Most of the enemies that you would want to use it on are, you know, they're very tough. So, you know, break, hey, yeah, just pretty much an instant death attack. Except they're resistant to it. That's sort of my experience with most RPGs in general, frankly. Um, so, spells like Break, I just don't bother. Uh, bow infused with Mystic Pap, with Magic Pap. At least does more damage, but... And yeah, some... I'm going to swap uh, Art over to an Evoker temporarily. Just to show off what the Evoker can do. It is unfortunate that, like, I've... It's unfortunate that the Pixel Remaster removes the magic from a lot of classes. Yo, know, like in older versions, Knight would have a little bit of uh, white magic. Thief would have a little bit of black magic. I think some of the other classes had uh, you know, low-level magic as well. And it's all just completely removed for this one, and it's rather unfortunate, frankly. Uh, anyway, down another set of stairs. <laughs> That's funny. Secret passage going absolutely nowhere. Earthen Bell, Gaia Vest, Viking Mail, Dragon Helm, Viking Helm, Rusty Mail.
Helmet worn only by the crowd of seafarers. Armor worn only by the crowd of seafarers. Bell that can paralyze enemies and Bell that can sound monsters hate. Those are for the, uh, the Geomancer. And they're whatever. Those blessed by earth and spirits. Mage Noah bequeathed his powers to his three disciples, Zande, Doga, and Uri. Zande, we've heard that name. The only ones powerful enough to cause the calamity we're facing now are those three mages and Delph. The Nautilus's engines should be powerful enough to get you through the gales of the cross-shaped peninsula. You must head for the Delph. Now, warriors. Oh, that's just... This is a dead end. But I heard that there used to be a tunnel back here back in the day. Phoenix down. Phoenix down. I, uh... I hope that dude's got a way out. I hope those stairs go somewhere that, you know... Anyway, so... Dowl! We have to go to Dowl. And that's all the treasures. You went on a secret. Investigate the second wall to the right in the mage's quarters to reveal a hidden room. Oh. Uh, thanks? Yahoo! Listen to this song of mine. Noah's loop can resound within dreams, but it now lies dormant, some would deem, in the temple of time, or so it seems. Hopefully, there's no more sing about oh, this. The seas under waves that mourn lies a temple abandoned and torn in South Saronia between the horns. Hopefully, that's less the thing I because I am bad. I'm so confused. As my father wished, I will usher in a new era of peace in Saronia. No, not just Saronia, the whole world. I cannot wallow in self pity forever. Hurrah for King Alice! I grant you free reign in my kingdom. You are welcome to anything you may deem useful to your noble quest. I can't wallow in self-pity forever. Dude, it's been... You get a little bit of self-pity after your... After your beloved father dies. You know, like, it's, 
It just happens. Like, you are allowed a little bit of time to just be like... To, you are allowed a little bit of time to grieve, dude. You don't have to be like... I must carry on. Also, uh, new era of peace in the world. Careful with that line of thinking. That's kind of thinking... Well, that's the way of thinking that... Yeah. I'll bring peace by conquering everybody. Be careful of that, dude. We are the Saronian Engineer Corps. You're welcome to take on Nautilus airship. We was stuck out of some ancient ruins and we fixed it up. We'll go get it! Huh? Wait for me! Dude. Guy really doesn't didn't pay attention to anything random. Everyone runs out and he's just like <laughs> He was doodling. He was doodling in a, in a sketchbook, that's all he, what he was doing. He was distracted with uh, he was distracted with drawing his anime waifus. He popped it outside the castle for you. The Nautilus should even get you through the gales of the down country. Fly safely. Obtain the Nautilus airship. A peaceful Saronia. Defeated Garuda and saved Saronia. How are you handling the Nautilus? Flies like a dream, doesn't she? Haven't had a chance to try it. So, before I do that, shops are open. Hey, thanks for... Peace has returned to Saronia. We are in your debt. Thank you, Warriors of Light. You're welcome. Uh, so what's this guy sell? Scholar Hat. Scholar Robe. Gaia Vest. Rune Bracers. Nothing I need right now. Uh, are there any other shops in this town? No, this town has no other shops. I forget what was in this room. What was in this place? That's uh, right. This dude had the, uh, the fat joke. Alright, let's try northeast. This one's got, uh, stuff. Alright. How much money do I have? 20,000. It's not much. Likely that's not the, uh... Oh, those spells I already have. Uh, nothing I need up here. Reading time now, okay. Ancient Tome, Volume 1. The great stone effigy set aflame all who seek the crystal. 
Only the four fangs grant the safe passage through their midst. I've got two of them, right? Yep, yeah, I got two of them. Book of Owen Bible. As the engineer who invented the reactor that powers the continent's flotation, I had decided to name it after myself, the Tower of Owen. Book of Owen Volume 2. The Wrath of Light was a miscalculation. I will have to place my son Desh in cryogenic sleep, protect him if it all to protect him if all goes wrong. If something should happen to the Tower of Hope, he can wake up to repair it. He can keep the continent afloat. Ancient of Volume 2. Our experiment with the floating continent succeeded. All that remains is to place it west of the cross uh, of the Dalek Peninsula. Engine Dawn Volume 3. We abuse the power that light has brought us, and thus doom the world to ruination. The wrath of light cannot be stopped. There is no hope. Volume 4. Though the four warriors of dark manage to forestall the wrath of light, we do not know from whence they hail, but we must be grateful for their help. I do really like the fact that it's... it actually... That's a story, like, that's a story I'd want to read, like, you know? Warriors of darkness saving the world from light? That would be an interesting story. Book of the Blade. Those serious about training in the way of the Dark Blade often make pilgrimages to Falcabar, a hidden mountain village west of Seronia. Thermodynamic meta theory and perpetual motion. The principles behind the theory of perpetual motion engines, as evidenced by the Wheel of Time, deal with the balance of antimatter and counter to. Aw, oh, I wanted to read more. Airships in action. Top three airships of the year. First, the Diving Nautilus. Second, the Colossal Invincible. Third, the Indomitable Enterprise. If I'm not mistaken, the Enterprise is the one that got blown up. I kept getting in my way. Three cheers for the words of light, saviors of Seronia. Debating whether I should pick. I don't know. I don't need more black magic. Be a little while before I can. And yeah, nothing here. This town's got nothing. He got Libra, Confuse, Silence, Break, Lazaga. That might be worth picking up. Yeah, I can always come back for that. Go 
What can I do for you? Rune uh, staff. Eighteen thousand. Staff that casts Lazaga when used in battle. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I thought one of the, uh, might be this shop over here, then, that has... Yeah, Kiraga, Raise, Protect, Thundaga. Causes instant KO to all weak enemies. Dispels beneficial magic. Honestly, wouldn't mind having Kiraga. I suppose it's not too important yet. Kiora still does uh, really good healing. Thing is, Kiraga. Well, I don't actually have any level 5 spell slots, though. So. Alright, so I can hold off for now. One, at least one of everything. Very unlikely to use the uh, sage again, but never gonna need more than four dragon helms. In fact, I'll probably never need. Dad will ever need more than one. That'll do. Um, pretty sure this dude had nothing particularly interesting. All right, the spears. Rune staff. Plus spirit plus four. Spirit plus four too as well, man. So Lazar got in that. That's not bad at all, frankly. Uh, 
All right. So let us now try the Nautilus. As always, can't fly over. Can't fly over mountains. Uh, this one cannot land in water. I haven't checked this out. Replito. Hmm, why isn't my summon spell working? Let me try again. Yeah. Bye. Oh no, not another chocobo. What am I doing wrong? Leviathan and Bahamut no longer inhabit these lands. Noah sealed them on the floating continent. There we go. Phoenix down, nice. I am a Gogan. In ancient times, the power of light flooded the world. A cataclysmic event we called the Wrath of Light. Now the same thing is happening with the power of darkness. Something must be summoning it. What it is, though, I cannot say. All I know is that which once brought balance to the world has thrown it into chaos. If either light or dark were to envelop the other, neither would survive. There once was a great and powerful mage named Noah who lived on the Dal continent, but he is no longer with us. One of the venerable Noah's disciples watches over the world of dreams. Rumor has it that this disciple slumbers in the southern fjords. Turtle shell, okay. Barrier shift doesn't work against summoning magic. Even if the enemy changes its weakness, the summon can still cause damage. The great mage Noah could command magic like no one alive today can even hope. Show. And an elixir. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, so, we're getting some interesting backstory stuff here. Interestingly enough, summoners can control stronger monsters than evokers. The illustrious Noah was said to have such summoning power that he could call forth Leviathan, and even Muhammad, the Dragon King himself. Yeah, we, uh, we are aware that Bahamut is on the floating continent. Dude almost ate us. Uh, an elixir. Nice, nice. Oh, hey, dude. Psst. I heard there's an underwater treasure trove beneath a small triangular island. No, good to know. Is that everything yet? Yep, that was everything. And everybody, I believe. Except we didn't check the magic shop yet. Ah, yes. Escape summon struck about. Sure. Aisen summons Shiva. Yes. 
Sparks summons Ramu. Hydra summons Ifrit. Not Ifrit. So, so here's the thing. A lot of the older Final Fantasy games came out before the internet was really... I mean, some of them came out before the internet was, like, something you could actually have in your home. Uh, but even that, like, before it was what it is today, or even what it was, you know, 15 years ago, even 20 years ago, you know, so it's like a lot of the games came out at a time when, you know, it wasn't really as easy as it is now to look things up. So, you know, back then, you saw something, you know, you saw a word, you kind of just pronounced it the way it looked. And that looks like Ifrit. So, for a long time, that was how English-speaking audiences pronounced that, was Ifrit. That's not how it's pronounced. <laughs> it comes from Arabic. Uh, and there it is pronounced Ifrit. So that is how I will uh, endeavor to pronounce it, pronounce it throughout this uh, series of Let's Plays. Ifrit. And more modern games that do have voice acting. Whenever Ifrit gets mentioned, that is how it's pronounced, is with the uh, long E sound. And Hyper summons Tate. Sure. Oh, no more spells can be read. Really? Yes, hyper yes. I have summons. I suppose I'll keep a couple. Turtle Shell. Cast a protective magic spell. So now that I have some summons. Let's test them out. Helgaru. Helgaru made. For some reason, that just made me think of uh, Pokaru.
Okay, I clearly misunderstood something over here. Why can I not summon anything? Oh, it does have that. Alright. Alright. Give me one quick moment here. Alright, so I've replenished uh, Ark's magic. I suppose I'll probably need a few levels for Refia to get the. Uh... Catoplaplus. And it was me. Dang it. Ah, All right, uh, which one to try? Let's try Shiva first. I didn't even realize Ingus got stone. Alright, so, uh, I think in previous ver in earlier versions of the game, evokers, it was, it was random that they saw. Here it seems to not. Uh, so. Let's try a spark this time. Rumble. Keep arc from dying. Here's Ramu. Not bad, not bad. Let's try in a freak this time. Healing. Oh, interesting. And Titan. Probably won't get the chance. So, summons. And, uh, also the ones that I did summon are probably, like, Shiva and Ifrit are kind of, like, the summons, basically. Um, like, just to a certain extent, like, they are, like, those are the two big, the two most, you know, notable summons. Uh, they're ones that you usually get fairly early on. So, they're not necessarily, like, the most powerful. But, uh... They are probably, I would say probably the most famous. They're sort of like the poster, the poster children for the, uh, for summons. Uh, I think in this game, most summons have three different abilities that they can use in this game. Uh, 
depending on the class that is summoning them. Uh, obviously, you know, inspired, however vaguely, by the uh, Shiva of uh, Indian myth. Indian, I think, right? Yeah, Hindu. So, yeah. Uh, inspired by... At least somewhat vaguely inspired by uh, Shiva of uh, Hindu legend. Though, really only from the name. He does have, uh, Shiva in myth does have uh, female avatars. Uh, there are other possibilities. Could be inspired by uh, the English word shiver. Um, could potentially be related to a uh, Slavic goddess, Ziva, goddess of love and fertility. Uh, pretty good chance that it's, I'd say it's probably also inspired by the uh, Yuki Ana. Yuki Ana, or Snow Woman, from Japanese folklore. Because that's a beautiful woman associated with snow and ice. Um... And that very much describes Shiva. Uh, Ifrit? Sort of talked about that earlier. Uh... When we fought the Jinn, I started talking about uh, the Afrit. Uh, it is from Arabian mythology, and uh, it's just a uh, just a Jinn that uses fire. So just a uh, fire-based entity. So that one is... Honestly pretty... basic. Should have talked about it a little bit earlier already. Ramu's inspiration. Give me a moment here to look that up. So, Ramu's uh, origin is a little bit trickier than, than say, a freak. Possibly inspired by uh, Mamu, from a uh, figure from Mesopotamian mythology. Um, 
So that's a possibility. Uh, the Lamu was associated with uh, water rather than lightning. Um, possibly inspired by Rama from the uh, the Hindu epic Ramayana. Uh, Rama was uh, supposedly an incarnation of Vishnu. So Ramu could be that even just the name Ramu could be combining Rama and Vishnu. Uh, potentially based on uh, King Ramu of the sunken continent of Mu, which is, for the record, not a real continent. Not a real thing. So yeah, a lot of different uh, things that a lot of the uh, so yeah, both Shiva and Ramu could have a bunch of different uh, sort of inspirations for where they come from. that said good time to end the episode so we did get the Nautilus which does have absolutely ridiculous speed I just look how fast the things move this is the one I was talking about earlier that it literally defied... Hey, we were told about this. Like, it just, it's impossibly fast. It is basically impossibly fast. By the uh, standards of the time. Maybe even today, it is a speedy little shit. some versions, at least, it is actually possible to be attacked while uh, flying around, though it uh, doesn't happen very often. I don't even know if it's possible to be attacked while flying the uh, flying it in the Pixel Remaster. Yeah, so the thing to remember about like how fast it is, it's not just the speed of, it's not, the airship itself isn't actually moving. The world is moving. So it's having to, like, load up the entire world as it moves. And it's loading everything in faster than actually should have been possible. Use, uh, give the technology of the time. I assume we'll check that that cave another time. Yeah, just look at the thing. Anyway. All that to say, we got ourselves a speedy little bastard now. So. Uh. So yeah, 
we will continue this uh, next time. We'll figure out where we have to go. We're just, there's some windy tunnel we're supposed to go down, so we'll check that out next time. For now, thanks for watching. And uh, I hope you will join me again.